Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Bali Khan. So far, 13 problems I have completed on computation of working capital requirement. Hope after watching all these videos, you will feel much confidence in attempting the problem on working capital. You understood how to find out the working capital requirement. Now, in this video, one more last problem on working capital I'm going to explain. Then I'm going to the next topic called cash management. So one problem on cash budget I'm going to explain in this video. So this video is going to be very much important from students point of view. So watch till the end with full concentration. And while watching the video, always keep a notebook pen calculator beside you. So that whenever I say important point, you should immediately write it down. Otherwise, you'll forget it. And these notes will be very, very important just to, before examination to brush up our knowledge. So before starting the next problem, that is problem number 14. Take the screenshot of the problem. And always I hope my students have got a printout of the problems, which I have given in the link under my description. Take the screenshot, then I'll explain all the points in detail. Now, see the 14th problem. XYZ Limited supplied the following information. Sales and production for the year 69,000 units. That means we have to estimate the working capital on the basis of 69,000 units of production. Finished goods in store 3 months. Raw material in store 2 months consumption. Production process 1 month. Credit allowed by creditors 2 months. Selling price is 50 rupees per unit. Raw material 50% of selling price, direct wages 10% of selling price and overheads are 20% on selling price. So we have to calculate what is the unit cost of material, labor and overheads. It is given here. Selling price per unit is 50 rupees and raw material are 50% of selling price. So 50% of 50 rupees, 25. And direct wages are 10% of selling price. It comes to 5 rupees. And overheads are 20% of 50 rupees. It comes to 10 rupees. The total cost comes to 40 rupees. But one point is given in the problem. 20% sales are on cash basis. That means 80% of sales are on credit basis. That's why data should be multiplied by 80%. Because 80% sales are credit sales. On account of credit sales, debtors will arise. 20% of cash sales. And uh, the credit sales allowed to customers for one month. The so debtors period is one month, one by 12. Then the overheads include 5 rupees depreciation. How much are the overheads here? 10 rupees per unit is the overhead. But it is given that in that 10 rupees, 5 rupees are depreciation. And remember, depreciation is a non cash expense that should not be considered for calculating working capital requirement. So normally we estimate working capital requirement on cash cost basis, not on non cash expenses. So we deduct this five, five rupees. So instead of 10 rupees overhead, we rupees, we take five rupees over it. 10 minus five is five, excluding depreciation. So total cost 40 rupees. In this 40 rupees, 5 rupees depreciation is included. Remove the total cost comes to 35 rupees. So here I have given working capital should be calculated on cost basis. So we have take overheads 10 minus 5 is equal to 5 and total cost 40 minus 5 35. That point you remember. There is regular production and sales cycle and wages and overheads accrue similarly. Wages are paid in the next month of accrual. That means outstanding wages for one month. Whatever wages are there for the current month will be paid in the next month. There is delay lag in payment of one month in wages. So we will take in current liability, wages outstanding. And uh, overheads are paid 15 days in arrear. 15 days means half month. So half month delay in payment of overheads. So outstanding overheads will take half month 0.5 by 12. Material is introduced in the beginning of the production cycle. That means when manufacturing is going on, 100% material is applied. 
whereas the work in progress will be calculated on the basis of 50% completion. Wages and overheads will be taken 50%, whereas material will be taken 100% because it is given materials are introduced at the beginning in itself. You are required to find out its working capital requirement on cash cost basis. Directly it is given in the problem, we have to calculate the working capital on cash cost basis, excluding non-cash, excluding depreciation. That's it. Now we'll start estimation of working capital requirement, stock of raw material. How many units we are going to make? 69,000 given in the problem. So 69,000 units into raw material cost per unit 25. Take this 25 into the material storage period is 2 months. It is given in the problem. 2 by 12. 2 lakh additional 500. Stock of work in progress. Now in working note we calculate work in progress. Material 69,000 units into 25 rupees into 1 by 12. Because it is given in the problem, material are in process for one month. So 1 by 12 into 100%. It is given in the problem that materials are issued at the beginning only. So 100% material is applied in the manufacturing process. So 100%. Direct wages 69,000 units into 5 rupees. 5 rupees is the direct wages per unit. Into 1 by 12 into 50%. It is not given in the problem. We make the assumption that in work in progress, half of the work is completed and still half is remaining. That's why it is called work in progress. Semi-finished goods. So 50%, 4375. Overhead, 69,000 into 5 rupees. Actually, overheads are 10 rupees. But in this 10 rupees, 5 rupees are depreciation. Exclude depreciation. So 5 rupees is the uh, wages. And uh, 1 by 12. One month is the process into 50 percent. Over it 69,000 into 5 rupees into 1 by 12, 50 percent, 14,300. Total is 1,72,500. This is the stock of WIP. Now, stock of finished goods 69,000 into 35. The total cost we should not take 40 because in this 45 rupees depreciation deduct, the 35 rupees is the total cost per unit into 3 by 12. 3 month is the storage period of finished goods that is given 6,3750 data 69,000 into 35 rupees total cost into 1 by 12 we are allowing 1 month credit period to customers 1 by 12 into 80 percent because 20 percent sales are cash sales 80 percent will take 1 lakh 61,000 take the total 12 lakh 24,750 this is the total of current assets now current liabilities, credit hours, 69,000 into 25 rupees, material cost is 25, into 2 by 12, 2 months period, 287,500, wages outstanding, that means it is given in the problem, wages are paid one month in accrual, accrual means due, January's wages will be paid in February, February's wages will be paid in March, one month accrued, outstanding. The wages outstanding 69,000 into 5 rupees is the wage cost into 1 by 12, 1 month, 28,750. Overheads are paid 15 months due, 15 days due. 15 days ka matlab half month, to 0 0.5 by 12. So 69,000 into 5 into 0 0.5 by 12, half month, 14,375. Take the total of the current liabilities, it will come to 3,30,625. We got total of current assets, we got total of current liabilities. So net working capital CA minus CL, current asset minus current liability, we will get 8,94,125. This is the end of all the problems on working capital. Now the next problem is on cash management. One of the technique of cash management is preparing a cash budget. So already I have explained this cash management or cash budget in the theory video which already I have uploaded. So before watching this video you should go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject, select the video of cash management. Be clear about the techniques of estimating the cash management, cash requirement. The cash budget, a cash budget is a plan showing the different receipts and payments for a future period of time. 
So cash budget is a budget which shows the cash receipts, cash payment and cash balance for a future period of time. So normally cash budget will be prepared on month wise basis like three months cash budget, six month cash budget or one year cash budget like that. Periodical cash budget will be prepared. Now the next problem, 15th problem is on cash budget. This is the first problem. See, give more concentration. Now, X Limited started business on 1st January 2021 with a capital of 40,000. The estimated sales and purchase for the next six months are as follows. So actually the big company started the business on 1st Jan 2021 with a capital of 40,000. So they are having a cash of 40,000 we assume beginning of the year. Then uh, the January, February, March, April, May, June for six months we are given the purchases and sales. 50% purchases are paid for in the same month. So whatever purchases we are making 50% purchases are cash purchases. That means payment are made in the same month itself. Remaining 50% purchases are credit purchases. So we bifurcate the total purchases into cash purchase and credit purchase. Right? Cash purchase means the payment is made in the same month. Credit purchase means the payment will be made in the coming months. Not in the same months, but in future months. So 50% of purchases are paid in the same month. The balance is paid during the next month. So whatever balance credit purchases are there, that credit purchase will be paid in the next month. Of the sales, 40% is on cash sales. So again, we bifurcate the total sales, 40% cash sales, 60% credit sales. Cash sales means immediately we are receiving the cash at the time of sale. And credit sale means we are selling the goods, but we will get the cash in future not in the same month. So 40% sales is on cash sales. The balance is realized in the next month. Whatever credit sales we are making, that amount will be received in the next month. Expenses of manufacturing come to 8,000 per month. Every month 8,000 rupees manufacturing expenses are payable. It purchased a machine for rupees 12,000 during February, payment for which is made during the same month. One machine is going to be purchased in the month of Feb for 12,000 and same month 12,000 rupees will be paid only once in the month of Feb. Prepare a cash budget for six months ending 30th June 2021. That's it. First of all, in working note, we have to calculate collection from debtors and payment to creditors. Collection from debtors and payment to creditors. These two will make the calculation in the working note. But the format of cash budget, see carefully, this is the first time I am showing you the format of cash budget. X limited cash budget for six months ending 30th June 2021. The company started business on 1st January 2021 and six months are completing on 30th June 2021. So this is the format. Six columns at the extreme right hand side January, February, March, April, May, June. Then details column. In this details, three items we require that is receipts, payments, and closing balance. These three things receipts. We are getting the money from cash sales and collection from debtors. These two are the receipts cash sales and collection from debtors. These items we will calculate in working note. Then payments are cash purchases, then payment to creditors. Cash purchases, payment to creditors and manufacturing expenses every month. And pur purchase of machine only in the month of Feb. So these four are the payments and these two are the receipts. The total of receipts should be A and total of payments is B. Then after calculating the receipts and payments, find out the surplus or deficit. How to find out surplus or deficit? A minus B. A is here. B is here. A minus B. If you get positive value, it is surplus. If you get negative value, it is deficit. So deficit should be put in bracket. 
तो पॉजिटिव और नेगेटिव पॉजिटिव मीन सरप्लस नेगेटिव मीन डेफिसिट तो डेफिसिट विल बी रिटर्न इन ब्रैकेट देन ओपनिंग बैलेंस ओपनिंग बैलेंस द बैलेंस एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द ईयर फर्स्ट जनवरी इट इज गिवन फोर्टी थाउजेंड फोर्टी थाउजेंड गिवन तो सरप्लस और डेफिसिट प्लस ओपनिंग बैलेंस यू विल गेट क्लोजिंग बैलेंस नाउ द क्लोजिंग बैलेंस ऑफ जनवरी will become opening balance for february this closing balance 20000 of january will become opening balance for february and the closing balance of february will become opening balance of march the closing balance of march will become opening balance of april like that it goes on this is the format of cash budget now we'll calculate cash sales the total sales are given in the problem the total sales we don't have any sales in january for february 32000 march 60000 april 68 may 68 june 80000 sales are given so carefully see the working note first working note collection from debtors total sales are 32000 60000 68 68 80 this is given in the problem and in the problem it is given 40% sales are cash sales so we bifurcate 40% and 60% 40% cash sales 60% credit sales <coughs> cash sales 40% so 40% of 32000 you will get 12800 40% of 60000 24000 40 40% of 68000 27200 same 40% of 68000 27200 percent of 80000 32000 So out of the total sales, we got the cash sales. Remaining sales are credit sales. How much? Sixty percent. So credit sales are sixty percent minus thirty-two thousand minus twelve thousand eight hundred. You'll get nineteen thousand two hundred. Similarly, sixty minus twenty-four, thirty-six thousand. Sixty-eight thousand minus twenty-seven two hundred, forty thousand eight hundred. Like that, we have segregated cash sales and credit sales. Now credit sales are collected in the next month. So whatever credit sales are conducted in the current month, that amount will be received in the next month. For example, January's credit sales, the amount will be received in February. February credit sales, the amount received will be March, like that. So here, collection from debtors. <coughs> First one dash, second one dash, because February credit sales, February credit sales are nineteen thousand two hundred. This nineteen thousand two hundred credit sales of February will be recovered in March, one month after. So nineteen thousand two hundred will be received in March. Similarly, March credit sale thirty six thousand. This will be received in April. April for how much? Forty thousand eight hundred will be received in May, and May's forty thousand eight hundred will be received in June. Next month. So whatever credit sales are there, that will be recovered in the. next month so what we got cash sales and collection from customers so here cash sales cash sales are january month dash february month cash sales are 12800 see here 12800 then we have 24000 then we have 27200 again 27200 32000 i have made all the calculations here cash sales now collection from debtors collection from debtors january february dash so here collection from debtors debtors january february dash now march 19200 36000 and 36000 40800 40800 that's so we have taken the cash sales we have taken the collection from debtors now take the total 12800 43200 63200 68 72 eight. these are the total receipts now i am coming to payments the payments are cash purchase in working note in working note it is given that 50% purchases are for cash 50% of purchases are paid in the same month same month means cash purchase the balance is paid during the next month in in the case of sales 40% 60% but in case of purchases 50 50 half of so half of the purchases are cash purchases remaining half purchases are credit purchases 
तो हाउ मच इज द टोटल परचेज गिवन द टोटल परचेजेस आर गिवन जनवरी 24000 फरवरी 40000 मार्च 48 अप्रैल 48 मई 52 जून 48000 दीस आर द टोटल परचेजेस फ्रॉम जनवरी टू जून नाउ वी बाय फॉर केट इनटू कैश परचेस एंड क्रेडिट परचेस 50 50 हाफ ऑफ तो हियर 24000 हाफ इज 12000 12000 12000 कैश परचेस 12000 क्रेडिट परचेस हियर 40000 हाफ 2020 20000 कैश परचेस 20000 क्रेडिट परचेस 48000 हाफ 24000 24000 कैश क्रेडिट 48000 24 24 52000 26 26 48000 24 24 24 सो वी हैव बाइफरकेटेड द परचेसेस इनटू कैश परचेस एंड क्रेडिट परचेस नो पेमेंट फॉर क्रेडिट परचेस आर मेड वन मंथ आफ्टर That means whatever credit purchases are made in January will be paid in February. Now February's credit purchases are made in March. One month delay. That is given in the problem. Now payment to creditors <coughs> in January we are not making any payment because one month delay is there. So whatever January's credit purchases are there that will be paid in February. How much are the credit purchases of January? Twelve thousand. So this twelve thousand credit purchase of January will be paid in February. Similarly, twenty thousand is the credit purchase of February will be paid in March. Then March twenty four thousand will be paid in April. April twenty four thousand will be paid in May. Twenty six thousand of May will be paid in June. These are the payments to creditors finished. Now we take the cash purchases and payment to creditors here. Cash purchases twelve thousand twenty thousand. Here we have calculated twelve thousand twenty thousand twenty four twenty four twenty six twenty four twelve thousand twenty thousand twenty four twenty four twenty six twenty four. Now payment to creditors last line we have calculated. No payment in the month of January. Put a dash. Then last one twelve thousand twenty thousand twenty four thousand twelve thousand twenty thousand twenty four thousand twenty four thousand twenty six thousand. That's all. we have taken cash purchases we have taken payments to creditors the next is manufacturing expenses it is given in the problem every month manufacturing expenses are payable 8000 rupees every month so here i have taken 8000 every month purchase of machine <coughs> it is given in the problem there is going to be a purchase of machine in the month of february for 12000 only once So twelve thousand rupees I have taken in Feb. That's all. Now take the total. Total of all these columns payment we got B. A is the total of asset uh, receipts and B is the total of payments. Now A minus B is the surplus or deficit. If you get positive surplus, if you get negative value deficit and deficit should be put in bracket. Now see here. Here zero. Here twenty thousand. There is no receipt in January, but there is a payment of twenty thousand required in January. So zero minus twenty thousand is minus twenty thousand. There is a deficit of twenty thousand shortage. Minus twenty thousand. But opening balance, how much we have? Forty thousand given in the first line of the problem. <coughs> the business was started with a capital of forty thousand. The business is having forty thousand cash. So forty thousand minus twenty thousand, twenty thousand is the closing balance. The closing balance of uh, January will become opening balance of February. Here closing balance twenty thousand. This should be taken as twenty thousand opening balance. That's all. Now again calculate twelve thousand eight hundred receipts and fifty two thousand payments. So twelve thousand eight hundred minus fifty two thousand, you are getting negative deficit. Thirty-nine thousand two hundred. Thirty-nine thousand two hundred is a deficit. Minus thirty-nine thousand two hundred plus twenty thousand. Plus twenty thousand, you will get nineteen thousand two hundred deficit minus. This is the closing balance of February, and this closing balance of February will become opening balance of March in the month of March nineteen thousand two hundred in bracket. Now again, you calculate forty-three thousand two hundred. Minus fifty-two thousand, you will get minus eight thousand eight hundred. Again, deficit. Minus eight thousand eight hundred minus nineteen thousand two hundred, you will get minus twenty-eight thousand. On the calculator, press minus. 
minus 8800 again minus 19200 you will get minus 28000 so minus 28000 is the closing balance for march this will become opening balance for april so in the month of april minus 28000 now you calculate 63200 minus 56000 you are getting surplus positive wealth 7200 positive so 7200 minus 28000 you will get minus 20800 negative the closing balance is negative minus 20800 this will become opening for may minus 20800 now 68000 minus 58000 10000 is the surplus positive so plus 10000 minus 20800 you will get minus 10800 closing balance of may now this closing balance of May will become opening balance for June. So minus 10,800 here. Now 72,800 minus 58,000 you will get 14,800 surplus. So 14,800 minus 10,800 4,000 positive closing balance. Positive closing balance. So remember carefully the closing balance here you are getting positive, here negative, here negative, negative, negative and then positive. That's all. This is called the cash budget. So I have explained each and every point in detail. If you cannot be able to understand in the first attempt, watch the same video two times, three times, then only you can be able to get a complete command on this topic of cash management. It's very simple. Only through practice, only with your interest, you can get a good command. I am doing best of my ability. The remaining thing is in your hands. So watch all the videos with full concentration, follow my instructions, definitely you will come up with flying colors in examination. Inshallah we will continue the next problem in the next video.